Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Wade McKenna. I'm back uh, with the Zero Downside podcast, brought to you as always by MoabTexas.com. Today, the question is really, why would I take BPC-157? What is BPC-157? Why would I use it? I hear about it. I'm, I'm beginning my journey on peptide therapy. I think that the questions surrounding BPC-157 are dramatic and all over the place as far as the answers that you're going to get. From our perspective, there's a lot of overlay, and I've said on one of the previous episodes, if you look at TB500, um, which is also known as TB4 or thymus and beta-4, there's a lot of names for TB500. For BPC-157, it's BPC-157, and it sounds um, really complicated that because it's just initials and a number. BPC, the scientists that described this, it was originally described uh, after they isolated BP, this peptide, it's just a peptide, naturally occurring peptide. We use a synthetic version of a naturally occurring peptide because it would be incredibly expensive to source this from gastric secretions, but it was isolated first from gastric secretions in, in studies of ulcer and how your gut tries to protect itself, which is one of the best uses of BPC-157 because it increases the mucosal lining. It's more resistant to injury. It's an, an inflammatory peptide to regulate gastric inflammatory change. So if someone has leaky gut, if someone has IBS, if someone has even, even as a protective effect on some of the other GI disorders, has BPC-157 been used really effectively in those patients? Yes. BPC stands for body protection compound. Now, I know BPC-157 is on the banned list from the FDA. So are everything that doesn't have a drug form. It doesn't mean that there's not safe and effective use of BPC-157. And, and I think that if you are a jujitsu person and you're in a gym and you hurt your shoulder and you say out loud, hey, I, my shoulders kill me, Half the guys in the gym are going to pull into their, something out of their gym bag and offer you BPC-157. That's most often what the weekend warrior or the combat athlete, that has been a really readily available peptide to go to for acute pain, chronic pain, inflammation. And that's a great use of BPC-157. You can inject it closer to the site of injury. It has been shown to have a, a fairly significant effect on the inflammatory cytokines, chemokines, the sources of pain and chronic inflammation. That's what your body uses it for. That's why it's called body protection compound. Here's the thing about medicine, especially with science, because science and politics used to not overlie each other. BPC-157 wasn't named by a marketer. It's not like some drug company hired a guy and said, hey, we need to come up with a great name for this peptide compound that we've isolated from gastric secretions because it looks like it has a significant amount of cardioprotective effects, neuroprotective effects, cognitive inflammatory effects with post-concussion syndrome, with Alzheimer's, with the cardioprotective effects post-ischemic stroke, post-heart um, attack, stabilizing the cardiac barrier. They didn't name it, market it, based on, we should name it, body protection come out. The scientists that named BPC named it over 30 years ago based on what it does in the human body. It wasn't a marketing phrase. Science normally names things if we don't name it after, if they don't name it after themselves or a family member or a pet project, then they're naming it based on its effect or its function or something anatomically or physiolog physiologically that they noticed about the, the, the peptide, the protein, the amino acid, we, the body part. Science names things based on structure and function normally. They did not name BPC, BPC-157, as a marketing ploy. They named it because that's what it does, right? So from the very beginning, the, the narrative against BPC-157 should, should kind of start fall in a little short when it's named body protection compound, especially if everyone's rattling the saber about how bad it could be for you. I do think that in cry, it has some significant eye protective effects. It ha it's been used for dry eye. 
It's been used status post-concussion syndrome. Probably most of the weekend warrior athletes use a little BPC around the site of injury. BPC is one of the only peptides in our clinic that, that I think that there is a two to three times a day use of sometimes because the half-life is so short. I think that taken in the morning around the site of, of pain can give you a significant upside on the regulation of the inflammatory response. BPC has been shown to train nitric, oxi ni nitric oxide levels. I think that anytime you talk about nitric oxide levels, you talk about sexual dysfunction. And so BPC-157, while there's a lot of crossover with a lot of the other peptides, I think of BPC-157 more of one of the initial peptides we would give someone in wound care, certainly. It's been used to augment um, and facilitate decreased scar formation, healing of a wound. But mostly in our practice, it's kind of the pain and anti-inflammatory peptide. So that probably the first easy, inexpensive go-to for a patient with one joint kind of problem that's not just fighting the overall muscle battle is probably BPC-157. At least that's what we would use it for in our clinic. I think there's a lot of overlap between BPC-157 and TB-500. I think that most of the TBI studies that have been done use them both concurrently. They, there's a significant little change in the pathway on both of those where one affects the cytokines a little bit more, one affects the sarcopenia a little bit more. So I think that the overlap on that is important and we'll go over that in the next video. How about that? So I think right now I wanna thank you for watching your attention to the episode. Please comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification button so you get to know about the rest of this playlist. And thank you for your attention. And hopefully we all learn something together.